Welcome to episode 63 of our series on the duties of the heart and we are in the gate of repentance and we're up to chapter 5 and this chapter is a continuation of chapter 4 which gave the essential elements of perfect repentance from beginning to end which were if we recap you have to have remorse number one number two you have to desist from sinning this sin in particular but all sins number three you must confess and ask forgiveness uh, for your sin and number four you must make an obligation not to repeat the sin now, within these four essential elements, uh, Rabbi Nubachia is going to give 20 examples, five for each element uh, of the conditions and how you must act. So, uh, Rabbi Nubachia begins. The conditions of the essentials of repentance are exceedingly numerous. I will mention only 20 of them. For each of the essentials of repentance, we will cite five conditions. Through these, each of the four essentials will be complete in the conditions of remorse. Number one, the five conditions of remorse are as follows. Number one, the penitent should fear the imminence of the creator's retribution for the sins he has committed. As a result of this fear, his remorse will be keener. As it says, give glory to Hashem your God before it turns dark, before your feet stumble on the mountains of darkness. From Yirmiyahu chapter 13 verse 16. So, um, uh, usually the servants uh, will expect kind of instant retribution or instant karma for his sins because he's now close to God and he's within slapping range of God if you, you know metaphorically speaking um, but he's also under God's hand so uh, but he also must expect swift retribution if he does sin and this can this uh, should give you a fear of of part of uh, sinning number two he should be broken-hearted and humbled before god on account of his sins as it says my people with whom my name is associated shall humble themselves and turn from their evil ways this is from divrei hayamim chapter 7 verse 14 so you have to be in the right state uh, you can't sin and then say, right, I've sinned at a great time. Now, let me just get on with my repentance. You can't do that. You have to be, you have to be uh, in, a, in a lowly state uh, spiritually. You know, you, you can't kid God uh, by just going through the motions. You have to be in the right place for you to be, uh, you know, to perform genuine repentance. Number three of these five conditions for remorse he should change his attire and finery and exhibit signs of remorse in his speech, eating habits and every motion, as it says in Yumiyahu, for this, guard you with sackcloth, lament and wail. Um, also, it's quoted from Yonah, let man and beast be covered with sackcloth. So important to make a um, change to your daily routine. You know, when we, go, when we wear our sneakers on uh, Yom Kippur, we do feel different. You know, we don't feel, we're not wearing our leather smart uh, Shabbos shoes. And, um, <clears throat> and it does make a difference to you. And also, obviously, eating habits and uh, just subdue yourself and your soul before you perform this is very important. Number four, the fourth condition. Through tears, lamentation, and mourning, he should express his remorse for past sins. As it says in Psalms 119, My eyes shed streams of water because they did not keep your Torah. And also Yoel 2.17, Let the Kohanim, God's servants, weep between the porch and the altar. <clears throat> so, if you, if you can bring yourself to such a state of penitence, that the tears will flow freely. Obviously, God sees this. There can't be crocodile tears because they're worthless. But if genuinely you feel, so, you know, so uh, uh, repent, uh, so sorry for what you've done, you know, it's a physical sign of your uh, penitence. And number five, the fifth condition of the uh, remorse is he should reprove and shame himself inwardly for having been deficient in his duty towards the Creator. May he be exalted. As it says, 
Uh, also from Yoel, chapter 2, verse 13. Rend your hearts, not your clothes. So this, obviously, this could come at the top of the list, but this is uh, the last condition. It's, um, you know, it has to start in your heart. Uh, there's no point in tearing and ripping your clothes and crying if in your heart you're not in the same place. Um, so, like I've said before, you know, repentance is such a powerful thing. You know, make it the right time. Be ready for your repentance because if you if you do it with less than a full heart, you'll just have to repeat it because God is aware, more aware than you are of your mental state. And if you're not ready to completely genuinely repent, then then hold off until you are. Uh, although I shouldn't really say that because it does. Uh, you should make repentance as quickly as possible. But what I mean is, make it genuine. If you're going to do it, make it genuine. Because God knows the difference, and he won't forgive you unless you're 100% genuine. But on the other hand, if you are 100% genuine, he will forgive you instantly. So remember that. The next section is conditions of desisting, the five conditions. Number one, desisting from all that the Creator has prohibited. As it says, hate evil and love good. This is from Amos 5, chapter 15, uh, verse 15. And also from uh, Yeshayahu 56.2, who keeps his hand from any wrongdoing. Uh, and also in Yeshayahu, chapter 55, verse 7, let the wicked person forsake his way and the corrupt individual his thoughts. Um, <clears throat> so this desisting means that you have to change your mind about what you think is good and what you think is bad, what is sweet and what is bitter, um, and, um, and stop doing these bad things. The second condition is abstaining from the, permit from the permitted that leads to the prohibited. Uh, for example, where there is doubt if something is permitted or prohibited, it is told of certain pious ones that they would abstain from 70 kinds of permitted things for fear of one kind that was prohibited. Consider also the safeguards instituted by our masters of blessed memory. As they said in Avos chapter 1, 1 make offense for the Torah. So abstaining from permitted things. Well, we can look at things like um, if alcohol, you, if perhaps you, you act sinfully after drinking alcohol or your, your behavior changes, um, alcohol is not a bad thing in essence. You make kiddish on alcohol, on wine. But if, um, if abstaining from the permitted, which, would may, which may lead you to prohibit, prohibit, prohibited things, you should abstain. So this is what it means by making a fence around the Torah. Even if it's permitted, abstain from it, you know, cleanse yourself, make yourself better, and, um, you know, uh, and uh, that's perhaps what it means. Now we move on to the conditions of asking forgiveness. Also five conditions in the forgiveness, uh, the confessional forgive, forgiveness stage. Number one, the penitent should confess his sins, which in his eyes and heart should seem to be many, as it says, for our transgressions are many before you. This is from Yeshayahu chapter 59, verse 12. So this, this and, and also I'm reminded of Rambam uh, with his Hilchot Shuvah. He also um, maintains that an essential part of um, the teshuvah uh, process is verbalizing your uh, confessing your sins to God. Uh, this is very important. Almost, it almost like crystallizes something. It removes something from you when you expel it through your vocal cords. That's the, an important stage. You must reveal to heal. I've heard. Um, number two, he should always remember them and set them before him, facing him, as it says in Psalms 51.5, for I am aware of my transgressions and my sin is ever before me. Number three, he should fast by day and pray by night when his mind is free and he is not preoccupied with worldly pursuits, as it says in Echa, arise and cry out in the night. Later, I will explain, with God's help, the virtue of prayer at night. So fasting is a physical thing. 
you know, there's one thing for us mentally to, uh, although mentally is very powerful, when we actually take it upon ourselves physically to make amends, uh, it's not easy to fast. And uh, it really shows a commitment that you're really, you know, you're physically, you're, it's, this, is, this is duties of the heart and the limbs in, in performance. Uh, so it's very important. Number four, he should plead with God and entreat him continually to pardon his sins. Forgive him and accept his repentance. As it says in Psalms 32, I acknowledge my sins to you and did not conceal my offense. I said, I will admit my transgressions to God. Let every devoted one pray to you as soon as he is able. Um, uh, and number five, he should strive and endeavor to discourage others from transgressing as he did. Warn them of, his consequent, of its consequences and encourage them to turn away from him. As it is written in Yonah, he who knows that he had sinned should repent. God will then relent and turn away from his anger and we will not perish. And also Psalm 51, I will teach transgressors your ways. This is very important. In fact, there is a, a very a deep philosophical argument that, uh, that poses the question, who is greater, the one who has never sinned or the one who sins and then uh, performs perfect penitence, repentance? It's a very, very hard question to answer because both seem equally, well, some say that the pious one is, but then if you don't live life, God wants you to gain experience in life, in all sides of life, to build up experience. Um, but at the same time, it tells you don't sin. But if you, if you uh, sin accidentally and you perform penitence and you, you perform repentance, you know, you've built something inside yourself. You've come back from war. You know, you could have gone through a lot to, uh, to come back. Like a, like a, you know, you could have been out in the field like a soldier. Um, now, what I think is the uh, the difference between the two is who is better. Perhaps the one is better is the one who sins and then repents, as long as he teaches others how to repent and the pitfalls of that sort of behaviour. Then he has he has a uh, performed he has learned something and taught something to others and he has safeguarded others from uh, perhaps or that will teach others how to perform repentance at what stages of repentance to be you know to be steadfast uh, the pitfalls of repentance the pitfalls of uh, of, of uh, changing your ways uh, if someone can offer valuable and worthwhile and effective advice then he has profited ultimately from his transgression and he has helped others. Perhaps then he is in a, a higher place, but that's for another, uh, another time. And um, we move on now to the conditions of undertaking not to repeat the offence. So these five conditions are as follows. Number one, the penitent should weigh gratification that is immediate but fleeting and marred against gratification that is delayed but enduring, abiding and pure, untouched by melancholy and not mingled with grief. He should also weigh pain that is immediate but fleeting and impermanent against pain that is delayed but constant and unrelenting. As it is written of true happiness in Yeshayahu 66.14, you will see and your heart will be glad. But of pain, it says, and he quotes uh, also from Yeshayahu, they will come out and look at the corpses of the people who sinned against me, for their worm will not die and, I, and their fire will not be extinguished. For behold, and also from Malachi, for behold, the day is coming, burning like an oven, when all the arrogant and all the evildoers will be straw, and the day that is coming will set them ablaze, but the sunrise will bring salvation to you who fear my name, with healing on its wings. Um, the, when the sinner takes this to heart, he is bound to undertake never to repeat his sin. So we are, well, we should, uh, this is very important. Um, is it really worth it? That's what you've got to ask yourself. And I think at the time when you're perhaps involved in uh, continual sinning, 
which some people are on a you know a mild sinning, uh, you kind of you're in a different place, um, and uh, you kind of you you take the pain in order to sin in some perverse way, you know you'll accept the punishment, but if you stop and really take stock of it and you correct yourself, you realize that you took the wrong attitude and that you, you, it's not worth it. The pain that you endure from sinning, it's not worth it. When you put yourself in a better place, you look back and you say, you know what, why did I waste my time backwards and forwards between uh, doing wrong and repenting, doing wrong, being punished and repenting? You know what? I should have. Uh, I, I, you know, I feel true happiness now. Why? Why did I delay that? It's a good way of putting. It. Why did I delay my happiness? Number two, the second condition: one should meditate on the advent of the day of his death, with the Creator angry at him for his inadequacy in the fulfilment of his duties, as it says. Uh, also in Malachi uh, chapter three, verse two. But who can endure the day of his coming? When he reflects on this, he is bound to fear his punishment and will resolve never to repeat what aroused the anger of his master against him. And this is very interesting. Meditate on the advent of the day of his death when he meets his maker. I heard something very, very interesting. That it should be a good, uh, uh, a good method for people to use this kind of uh, meditation. Uh, I heard there's, uh, someone says, you must imagine being brought before God on your, after your death. And what he does is he welcomes you, but he says, you know what, let's say, you know what, Michael, I want to show you what you could have become. And then you see, he brings to you perhaps your neshama as it should have been. Uh, the way that you could have been, your potential, your true potential that was, that was realized. And you imagine the torture that must be to see what you could have become. Uh, so try and bear that in mind when you see, when you feel fleeting uh, passions and various other things that detract from your soul. Remember your potential, and God is always there to push you to your potential, and He wants you to be the best you can be. And imagine seeing what you could have become. Um, how terrible must that feel? Number three of these five conditions. One should consider the days he turned away from God and disregarded his service, despite the steady favors that God bestowed upon him throughout that period. As it says, and he quotes from Yumiyahu, For long ago I, God, broke your yoke and burst your bands. And you, Israel, said, Lo e'ava. Lo e'avai in this verse means, I, referring to Israel, will not assume your service nor enter in your covenant. As though it is said, Lo e'avai b'ritecha, as in, Le'evarcha b'brit Hashem lokecha, to enter into the covenant of Hashem your God. That's from Deuteronomy chapter 29 verse 11. The fourth condition is as follows. One should return what is stolen. Avoid transgressions and shrink from harming anyone, as it is written in Yechezkel 33 verse 15. The wicked man returned the security and paid for what he stole. Um, and uh, also he quotes from Eov, Job 11.14. If there is guilt in your hands, remove it. Let no injustice reside in your tent. Then you will lift up your face without blemish. So, obviously... If you stole something, and even if you did your prison time, if you stole something and you didn't reveal where it was, you know, you're still going to profit from your sin. So you haven't really, your time in prison hasn't really given yourself full penitence because you have to return the stolen item before you've set things straight. If you've got to uh, recover your if you've got to set the universe straight, you can't lie to the universe. So if you owe someone money, if you stole money from somebody, even though you make repentance, you have, if you have the money, or you have the item, you have to return it and make repentance. Then you can consider yourself job done. Fifth and last condition 
of uh, this section. One should meditate on the majesty of the Creator, and may he be exalted, whose word he defied by throwing off the bonds of his service and the restrictions of his Torah. He should reprove and shame himself for this. As it says, is this how you repay God from uh, Deuteronomy 32.6? And also Yirmiyahu 5.22. Will you not fear me, said God? So you have to uh, understand that um, you know, you're, you're lucky to be under the providence of God and you know you should meditate that someone that God who is ultimately the master of the universe is taking a direct interest in you in every one of your affairs 24 7 you should appreciate that sometimes we think that you know God is only for you know for ourselves which he is in, in some respects but he also is the master of the universe something that is beyond imagination but he also gives us a hundred each one of us a hundred percent focus respect that respect his attention and Rabbeinu Bachia uh, concludes this chapter through these conditions the essentials of repentance that were cited above are completed and uh, I think we're going to stop there for this uh, episode but fascinating five conditions for each of the four stages of repentance that really you know repentance is such an important thing and we should meditate on all of these 20 uh, uh, conditions every time that we are moved to repentance and make our, our, our teshuva complete make it correct and make it genuine because you know if we do it properly God happily wipes the slate clean we should understand that yeah, and we're left with no trace of uh, our past sins if we do it genuinely with the pure and genuine heart then God is happy to wipe the slate clean but it has to be done right and here Rabbi Nubachia is giving exact conditions telling us exactly how to do it textbook style so I look forward to chapter 6 uh, where we're going to discuss how people are moved to repentance in four different ways